region of Ghana extends from Takradi to the border of Côte d'Ivoire. The region is known for its bountiful natural resources, including fisheries, forests, minerals, and more recently, oil and gas. While providing many economic benefits to Ghana, the exploitation of these resources also brings challenges to the community of the Western region. The discovery of oil in 2007 placed the Western region in the forefront of Ghana's rapid economic development. It has brought about both opportunities and challenges for its communities. The beginning of oil production has increased employment opportunities and brought about foreign investments in the region. However, it has also seen the regional center of Takradi Sekendi grow at a fast pace. Demand on infrastructure is now pacing development, creating issues of traffic congestion and a rapid rise in the cost of living. seen an increase in the number and diversity of NGOs which are committed to the development of the region. In 2002, these NGOs came together to form the Western Region Network of NGOs, or as we call it, Waringo. I'm OY also Secretary, the chairman of Waringo. I got involved in Waringo, or with Waringo activities way back in 1999, when uh, I was invited by the then, uh, or by the leader of Friends of the Nation, Chris Mevuta. He called for a meeting of all NGOs in the region to look at the way forward, how best we can come together to form a regional network. I remember the first meeting was at um, Monkey Hill, around 99, and almost all the people there, about 30 of us, agreed that we want to go into this um, network come together to form a Western Regional Development Network of NGOs, which actually started from that day and onwards we started the other planning activities to get the network going. So far, so good. I am Don Chris Mevuta, the Executive Director of Friends of the Nation and a pioneer of the Western Region Development Network of NGOs. The realization to bring together like-minded civil society organizations and community development organizations came about from the emergence of civil society in development. Ghana had just come out from a silence of culture and an involvement of civil society in development and hitherto we had realized the presence of foreign NGOs in the country since independence and come 1990 with the emergence of the civil society groups there was a need to bring them together and foster some sort of relationships that would accelerate their presence and visibility in development. Somewhere in May 19, uh, 2002, the initial maiden meeting was held and Warengo, as a name, Western Region Development Network, was chosen. Warengo promotes and encourages the establishment of coalitions, associations, and networking among its members. The network also links members to other stakeholders, including government, the private sector, international organizations, and agencies. Current efforts of Warengo are aimed at building the capacity of its members through workshop training and knowledge sharing. The network all have very different backgrounds and reasons for existence, with efforts focused on issues including environment, 
and natural resource management, education, poverty, human rights, advocacy, skills development, and health care. I'm Eric Kogner, the Programs Coordinator of IEDI. I think I'm from Shama. IEDI is an integrated rural development organization established to strengthen local initiatives. Our objective, our vision is to make sure that rural communities take control of their own resources through equal opportunities, education, and volunteerism. I think we have four key program areas. Rural Life Rural Support Program, Leadership and Governance Program, Community Development Program, and then National Natural Resource Governance. Currently, I think we are working on our Leadership and Governance Program, where we are implementing a project dubbed Doors to the Future, and it was envisaged as an attempt to try and then reduce the massive BC failure rate that we had in Shamar District. I think the district recorded close to 70% failure rate in 2007. And then these reading and writing clubs were established to help their kids to be able to read and write good English. But that was identified as a major problem, their inability to read and write good English. So currently we are doing very well. We are trying to improve the level of education within the district. As I said, we started the project at a time that we had over 70% failure rate and currently I think we have a pass rate of 56% and I believe that by the time this year's BCE results are released, we will we, be getting closer to our ultimate objective. We have a project as well on, in the oil and gas sector and this time around we are looking at the fishermen and how they've been affected by the oil and gas find. Um, within this Shama district most of the people are farmers and then fishermen and for the three major fishing communities they do um, the, the deep sea fishing and they are the people who are majorly affected by the oil find. And so uh, basically we are trying to um, help them or take away the negative impacts. Uh, we've been a member of Warengo for a very long time and actually we've been collaborating with them in most of our work that we do. I'm Ekua Ansa Eshen, the founder and the CEO of ATWA. ATWA means advocates and trainers for children, women, advancement and rights. We are based at the airport reach. We are a local service NGO and we have programs that is run in the whole country except Upper West Region. That program is called the World's Children's Prize. It is a program that educates children on their rights and introduces them to the democratic system. 2013 is unique for us because it was the first time a Ghanaian was showcased as a child rights hero. In 2013, Ghanaian children showed their appreciation for what the child rights hero called Kofi Annan of Challenging Heights in Winneba has done saving children who are enslaved into the fishing industry on the Volta Lake around Yeji. He got 144,484 votes. Globally, he got over 2 million votes. So Kofi Annan received the World's Children's Prize. I'm Antonio Kwame Dakum, the Executive Director for New Generation Concern. 
a member of Waringo. Basically, we are into agriculture and natural resource management, quality education, and gender issues. I have my office at Waseko, but I work in other districts, in other four districts in the, in the country, both central and western region. We facilitate farmers in the new improved methods of farming. My name is Isa and um, I'm the head of uh, the founder and the chief executive of Tractor. What we're trying to do here is to enhance the local knowledge with modern farming technology and information technology. What we do here with palm oils, we enable the farmers, we call it from the soil to the table. And from our soil to the table principle is do the nursery. From the nursery we give to the farmers. The farmers plant them on the plantation. We buy the fruits from them after two and a half years. We add value by processing it into oil palm and palm kernel oil. The byproduct, we, which is very unique in this country, we, we transform the byproduct into organic animal feed and also the absolute waste into organic fertilizer and that's what we give to our farmers to encourage them to do their organic vegetable production. I'm Ben Etten. I'm the director for Beria Social Foundation. It's an NGO, it's church related. Beria Social Foundation is related to Beria Baptist Church. Beria Social Foundation is a member of Warengo and I personally deputize for the chairman as his vice. <coughs> Beria Social Foundation is primarily into children's education work. We sponsor some kids through from elementary school right through tertiary institution presently. We also work with the government on social accountability on district and metropolitan municipal levels, uh, helping for the society to know what these assemblies do for them and be accountable to them. Friends of the Nation is one of the local NGOs established 20 years ago. A very, very few local organizations at the time that believes that the resources of this region and for the, in generality for the state, has to be accessible and the benefits equally shared for the people. We are involved in natural resources management for that matter, community development and enterprise development. Our focuses are on oil and gas, mining, fisheries, coastal management and forestry. Whilst we look at governance, we look at population health and environment issues and we want to catalyze private sector involvement with government, being a watchdog for society to ensure that the best practices are applied in any endeavor with private sector and government. These are basically things that we do, but we live in equity and accessibility to resources by the people. The resources are for the people and must benefit the people. I'm Gifty Baba Asu, the founder and executive director of Das Gift Quality Foundation. Uh, das Gift Quality Foundation seeks to empower women, especially the grassroots women, and through microfinancing, through um, other programs. Uh, currently, I'm working with these women. These women are palm kernel oil processors, and they are from five different locations in the western region. What I'm doing with them now is to mobilize them because they used to be scattered. Everybody at his or at her own corner doing something. But I felt it is important because there is strength in numbers to bring them together and then have common voice. So I am trying to mobilize them and try to strengthen their capacity to be able to 
look for better markets so that they can improve their wealth. Now we are meeting. We have uh, dedicated one day in every month to hold meetings to deliberate and discuss about their own issues. So that is why we are here today, just to meet and discuss our welfare. Thank you. Amen. <laughs> The future for Orengu is just embedded in its vision. The vision of getting Orengu as an organization that is recognized by development actors and that stands to be a voice of the people. They have the voice all right, but occupying the space and governizing efforts and thoughts is the biggest challenge. A region that has about 11 dialects is something very challenging when we come to consensus building. A region where diverse resources, gold has its enclave, cocoa has its enclaves, forest has its enclave, oil now has its enclaves, and hitherto when it was only forest, you can see only a few voices. When it came to gold, some voices joined. Oil, the Cisco scientists are beginning to develop a voice. But how to build one big voice for original development is the biggest challenge. That could be fostered well by civil society organizations, making sure that they've come together, identify their problems, and taking a strategic move and stop duplications, open up, be transparent and accountable to the constituencies, and gain leg legitimacy and mandate of the constituency to move the region forward. If this, this is not done, it will take a longer time. But the opportunities are there now that with a strong wearing goal, the region can move forward and partner government in development. The way forward, yes, in as much as it's not possible to get all um, net um, NGOs in the region and that, but I believe that the way forward is the little that the few NGOs that we have in place should actually come together. Now, Western region is a target region for ones for the fact that the oil fine is now a big of, a bit of a problem. The chiefs are there calling for this. The politicians are there calling for whatever. It is time that NGOs in the region also come together. For now, yes, it's true that we are talking about um, revenue. We are talking about um, our chiefs were talking about 10 percent. Everybody is talking about Western region, but then our focus should be what should be could be the gains, right? If even we're giving the 10 percent and we are unable to manage it well, what actually specifically does the region want to do with whatever is coming? So that if we have a focus, if we have a, a where we know where we're going. Then whatever comes from government, from whatever source, could be channeled to those sources. But then, if we actually don't have a plan of what we want to do or what we want to achieve within the next 10 years or 15 years, then virtually whatever comes will go without having an impact on the people. If we're talking of poverty uh, alleviation, we are talking of a, 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 a job security for the people. What skills do they have? What preparation have been made such that the OICs or the NOCs could actually get what they want or what get our people on board so that they also benefit from the fund. Else, even the employment sector that we're talking about, we may not even get employed. And other people who come from elsewhere, they'll be employed, they take their, their booty elsewhere and you're not gain from it. With a common voice, we can move whatever, or we can do whatever we want to do. The government will hear us and they will know that we are serious ones. So I'm urging all NGOs out there who are not our members to also look at the need to come and join so that with a common voice we can advocate and um, behind our chiefs and the regional authorities and then we move the region forward. At this point of great change, it is more important than ever for NGOs to work together as one and to work with communities and governments, both at the district, regional and national level, to address social, economic and environmental challenges.